Chapter 4 Globalization and the Indian Economy What is globalization? In the past two or three decades, more and more MNCs have been looking for locations around the world which would be cheap for their production. Foreign investment by MNCs in these countries have been rising. At the same time, foreign trade between countries has been rising rapidly. A large part of foreign trade is also controlled by MNCs. For instance, the car manufacturing plant of Ford Motors in India not only produces cars for the Indian market, it also exports cars to other developing countries and exports cars com components for its many factories around the world. Likewise, activities of most MNCs involve substantial trade in goods and also services. The result of greater foreign investment and greater foreign trade has been greater integration of production and markets across countries. Globalization is this process of rapid integration or interconnection between countries. MNCs are playing a major role in globalization process. More and more goods and services, investments and technology are moving between countries. Most regions of the world are in closer contact with each other than a few decades back. Besides the movement of goods, services, investment and technology, there is one more way in which the countries can be connected. This is through the movement of people between countries. People usually move from one country to another in search of better income, better jobs or better education. In the past few decades, however, there has been much increase in the movement of people between countries due to various restrictions. Factors that have enabled globalization Technology. Rapid improvement in technology has been one major factor that has stimulated the globalization process. For instance, the past 50 years have seen several improvements in transportation technology. This has made much faster delivery of goods across long distance possible at lower costs. Even more remarkable have been the developments in information and communication technology. In recent times, technology in the area of telecommunications, computer, internet, computers, internet has been changing rapidly. Telecommunication facilities like telegraph, telephone including mobile phone, fax are used to contact one another around the world to, across, to access information instantly and to communicate from remote areas. This has been facilitated by satellite communication devices. As you would be aware, computers have now entered almost every field of activity. You might have also ventured into the amazing world of internet where you can obtain and share information on almost anything you want to know. Internet also allows us to send instant electronic mail, email and talk that is voicemail across the world at negligible costs. Using IT in globalization, a news magazine published in London readers is to be designed and printed in Delhi. The text of magazine is sent through internet to the Delhi office. The designers in the Delhi office get orders on how to design the magazine from the office in London using telecommunication facilities. The designing is done on computer. After printing, the magazines are sent by air to London. Even the payment of money for designing and printing from a bank in London to bank in Delhi is done instantly through the internet, that is e-banking. Liberalization of foreign trade and foreign investment policy. Let us return to the example of imports of Chinese toys in India. Suppose the Indian government puts a tax on import of toys. What would happen? Those who wish to import these toys would have to pay tax on this. Because of the tax, buyers will have to pay a higher price on imported toys. Chinese toys will no longer be as cheap in the Indian markets and imports from China will automatically reduce. Indian toy makers will prosper. Tax on imports is an example of trade barrier. It is called a barrier because some restrictions has been set up. Governments can use trade barriers to increase or decrease, that is regulate, foreign trade and to decide what kinds of goods and how much to each how much of each should come into the country. The Indian government, after independence, has put barriers to foreign trade and foreign investment. This has considered necessary to protect the producers within the country from foreign competition. Industries were just coming up in 1950s and 1960s, 
and competition from imports at that stage would not have allowed these industries to come up. Thus, India allowed imports of only essential items such as machinery, fertilizers, petroleum, etc. Note that all developed countries during the early stages of development have given protection to domestic producers through a variety of means. Starting around 1991, some far-reaching changes in policy were made in India. The government decided that the time had come for Indian producers to compete with producers around the globe. It felt that competition would improve the performance of producers within the country since they would have to improve their quality. This decision was supported by powerful international organizations. Thus, barriers on foreign trade and foreign investment were removed to a large extent. This meant that goods could be imported and exported easily and also foreign companies could set up factories and offices here. Removing barriers or restrictions set by the government is what is known as liberalization. With liberalization of trade business, businesses are allowed to make decisions freely about what they wish to import or export. The government imposes much less restrictions than before and is therefore said to be more liberal.